Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I've actually been pouring a, a cement step. Me and Michael mixed up about 15 bags of cement, and I got to go back over there letting it sit so I can go ahead and smooth it on out and put the edges and stuff on there. So taking a little break here, catching my breath. We do have our live stream at 5 o'clock Eastern, and then I'm going to be cooking. I'm going to be making some tacos on the grill. So, yeah, we're going to be doing that. Uh, anyway, be that as it may, I heard something that was really kind of interesting, and I want to get y'all's feel for this. First of all, I'm going to say that this offseason hasn't been as bad as everybody thinks. I don't think it's been as bad as everybody thinks that it has been, okay? And I say that the Cowboys, I know um, the Cowboys over the last 15 years, believe it or not, are sixth in wins during the regular season. I know regular season wins don't mean anything to most people, but you have to have regular season wins in order to get to the next level. So there is that aspect of it. Be that as it may, we need to figure out what we need to do to be more successful in the playoffs. And for all those that say blow it up, well, we could blow it up, but you're going to be starting all over. And as we've seen, trying to find quarterbacks and such is not an easy thing to do. Quarterbacks, wide receivers, edge rushers. But let's listen in for a second here. I just want to remind you, and we're going to get to Micah Parsons and the possibility that he's going to be a $40 million man. Let's listen to how bad things could be. And you guys are the flagship. They let you guys say whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. For like I, my time, my three years there, there's only one time, Sean, that they said, yeah, don't ask that question. Everything else, it's been fair game. Yeah. Not everybody does that. We start with the Washington uh, Commanders. Yes. So their flagship station saying, oh, thank God we can talk about the Commanders now. <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them. Right. So, but I looked at really, when I, Kevin, when I looked at just like a day by day timeline, you know, they beat the Eagles on January 8th. They lost two out of their three games, right? They blame the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has to there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yep. But the Cowboys have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is, that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. <laughs> Randy Gregory, whom the Cowboys stuck by, despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, yep. gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because yeah. the coaching staff didn't like him. But they kept their punter. <laughs> so Mac, why why is Stephen Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? <laughs> That's a great one liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh because it's so we see all these teams talk about we're in Cap Hell, we're in Cap Hell, and then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing and you know, I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's he has come to it admit and embrace the idea if you're going into free agency that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago okay that's fine that's that sound philosophy yeah and are you getting any better are the dallas cowboys today no. today on march 23rd part of march march 25th are they any better today sean no no way we're on okay and no one and no one not even the biggest homer fan i mean not even okay so I remind you, I, I, I want you to actually think about this for a second, okay? He's lambasting the Cowboys and saying, they're not any better. They're not any better. You could actually make the argument of losing 
Amari Cooper with a trade for a fifth round pick. At least the Titans got a first round pick for AJ Brown. Losing Cedric Wilson, losing Randy Gregory, losing Lyle Collins, losing Connor Williams, that you look at that and say, they didn't replace any of those guys. And as he said, you know, you see other teams go out there and make big moves like Tariq Hill. At the same time, you saw that the Denver Broncos went out and got Russell Wilson and, of course, took our guy Randy Gregory. So you're sitting here and looking at these situations and saying, my God, we just are stupid. But I ask you, what has Tariq Hill done for the Miami Dolphins? Have they won a Super Bowl? Did they go further than we did? Did Denver going all in and getting those guys? You can look at the Jets because every year the Jets, we always hear about that team is loaded. That team is ready to go. They went out. They got Aaron Rodgers last year. And how'd they do? So I understand there's the perception that automatically you go out and get a whole bunch of players. You're going to be great. We could look at the Eagles last year who coming off of the Super Bowl, that they got Kevin Bayard, you know, and brought him in there, that they had this incredible draft that they talked about and how great all the moves that Howie Roseman made. And the reality is, is we split the games and we both lost in the first round of the playoffs. And we didn't do any of those things. So to say that, you know, the Cowboys are stupid, uh, you know, unless you're Kansas City that's winning multiple Super Bowls, you're no worse than all the people that are making all the big free agent moves. I, I, I feel you. I would like to make a couple take a little bit more risk and try and add to the kitty a bit, but that's not Jerry Jones's way. So be that as it may, now we're hearing something very interesting. And that is that Micah, of course, looks at it and says, I want to be the highest paid non-quarterback. We already know $35 million right now is Justin Jefferson. Some people believe that CeeDee Lamb is going to be a little bit more, 36 maybe, that Jamar Chase may end up being more than CeeDee Lamb. So we're looking at this and saying that, you know, the next two months it may be 37 million is the highest non-quarterback. And my big question is this, is are the Cowboys going to be in a rush to pay Micah Parsons? Because right now they only have a $5 million cap hit. It would actually behoove them to wait till next year to do Micah Parsons because then they're not adding any more money to this year's salary cap. They can actually go through and take that, you know, the, the uh, fifth year option money and basically make that their cap hit or reduce that a little bit like hopefully they'll do with CD Lamb. And even though it may cost them more to pay him, at least it's throwing the whole thing further down the line. And we've been talking about this for a while that it behooves you to get CD and Dak done this year and wait till next year for Micah Parsons. Now, the flip side of this or the bad part of this is Micah Parsons may not like waiting to get paid. He may not like waiting to get paid, in which case he may end up being more of a distraction. But the question becomes is nobody gets paid a year early except for lesser players. D-Law got franchise tagged. Um, Dak got franchise tagged and would have again if they could. Um, Dalton Schultz, he got tagged. Tony Pollard, he got tagged. So the Cowboys aren't in the business of saying, let's pay you early and get it out the way. They are the last minute dudes that wait till the last minute. So whether or not They do. It has nothing to do with all the people out there saying they need to do. Well, the reality is, is they don't give a rat's ass about what you say they need to do. They've looked. And when you listen to all of that happened to us right there from Amari Cooper and everything else. And here now we're looking at a wide receiver that may be twice the amount of money that Amari Cooper is because he's earned it. You kind of have to say The fact that they've got three players that are in the tops of their positions that deserve max contracts, that they actually did something right in finding those guys. Because a lot of teams have a hard time finding those guys. They do. Look at Washington that's been looking for a quarterback forever. 
They wish they had the problem of we got to pay, you know, our quarterback to be the highest paid. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good people. I will see you all in about two hours. In the meantime, I need to go to the store and get some stuff for uh, dinner. I got to go over and screet the uh, concrete and um, do some prep work for dinner. So that way, when the show's done, I can eat. Peace out, good people. I appreciate you. Boom.